Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and let me take you on a trip back to the past. So, the original Xbox was the home to fantastic RPGs. Fable 1, Morrowind, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, Arx Fatalis, even Jade Empire. There were so many wonderful RPGs, and funny enough, RPGs that we still talk about to this day on the channel. You move into the Xbox 360 generation, and I feel that was mostly dominated by multiplayer games when it comes to exclusivity, Gears of War, and of course, Halo 3. There were still RPGs like Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon, and on top of that, we had Operation Darkness, but there wasn't as many, and as many prominent ones at that, compared to the Xbox original. Although, play uh, Lost Odyssey if you haven't yet. Just my little advice to you for this video. We move into Xbox One, where it's mostly the same thing as 360 in a lot of ways, but more importantly for this discussion is it's not a lot of exclusive RPGs or to me, exciting exclusives at all. Then we look at the future here for the Series X and S consoles where Xbox has established a stable of fantastic RPG developers from Obsidian Entertainment to Bethesda Game Studios. They have In Exile Entertainment. They have Playground Games working on a new Fable title. There are so many fantastic proven RPG developers underneath one umbrella, and I wanted to focus the conversation on that because we're looking at the likes of Starfield, which admittedly we don't know anything about, but still, this is an RPG from Bethesda Game Studios. More familiar though, Elder Scrolls 6. We also have Avowed, the potential of the Outer Worlds 2. On top of that, we have In Exile working on a AAA RPG according to a job listing. Furthermore, they just released last August Wasteland 3, an RPG that just came and went. I don't get it. Please play this game. It's two player online co op if you don't want to do it by yourself, but it's so good. We'll talk about that more in this video. And then we have, of course, like I said, Playground Games who is rebooting Fable. There are so many exciting RPGs coming in the next number of years to Xbox, it looks like, and I just need you to talk about that in this video because I think this is an exciting future. There's lots of options. There's lots of IP coming back and new ones as well. And so with that, let's discuss because a lot of people want me to talk about this. If you're IGN, you want Xbox to consolidate all of this. So the reason I'm talking about this, I'm not interested in making enemies. In fact, I just want to exist here, talk about games. Uh, I would like to make friends, if anything, but I care about the games industry. And the way I interpret these tweets is that uh, this is exactly why the video game industry will never elevate its conversation. It's why we will remain in the depths of console fanboyism and constantly slinging bullshit at each other because the leaders of this industry can't seem to wrap their head around, hey, two fantasy RPGs can exist at once. We can have Avowed and we can also have Elder Scrolls 6. We don't want to always gun for the popular thing to get out quickly. This is a creatively driven industry. People need to start understanding that. Axing a passion project like Grounded, something that has millions of players, that was made by a team of 14 people at Obsidian that's quietly just existing on its own and doing very well, we want to cut that down so we can get Elder Scrolls 6 a bit quicker. What of Avowed? We want to ax that too? We don't even know what that is. What if Elder Scrolls 6 ends up sucking, but we have Avowed at least? There's that perspective as well. Take a look at what happened with Fallout 76. Bethesda Game Studios, as Bethesda as a whole, deviated, made an online Fallout game. And guess what? We had the Outer Worlds sitting right there in that same window, and it came at the perfect time. It was incredibly refreshing to have. That's why we don't want to have all these projects axed for the sake of one. Let me continue the examples. Epic Games, they had Fortnite really start rolling. I'm a big MOBA fan. I liked Paragon. I thought that game had a ton of potential. What did Epic do? They decided to kill that project and rolled the whole team into Fortnite to push more of those Fortnite bucks. Did they make more money off of it? Of course. Would Epic have survived if they kept both alive? 100%. But they chose not to. They chose to cut down a passion project and instead went all in on Fortnite. And to some extent, yeah, you could argue it paid off. But point being is that if we go all in on extremely popular titles and we start to leave creative visions to the wayside, this industry will move nowhere and especially now with people suggesting this in the conversation so i'm sorry i gotta say it before we get into our main conversation i'm not one to like the dog pile i think that type of mentality is bullshit a lot of people like to put you in a box and quickly identify you that's not how i operate but i think that when it comes to the conversation in the industry and everyone including these folks are invested in what is the future of our industry how do we bring it to a level where people are going to take us seriously these are things that need to cease 
as soon as possible. With that, let's talk about Xbox RPGs. I mean, where to begin, right? Bethesda Game Studios is now underneath Xbox, and I'm going under the assumption that at least Starfield. I think Elder Scrolls 6 is a to be determined. I think there's a pretty good chance that's a timed exclusive, but we'll see because that could end up being the flagship title for Xbox. We don't know what position they'll be in down the line and how much money they'll put on the table or if they'll need to put money on the table at all to tell Bethesda, hey, we don't want you to do a PlayStation version of this because Todd Howard has hinted in the past that they want to still do a PlayStation version of this game that it'll still come to PlayStation. So I feel like they have an understanding mutually that Elder Scrolls is very different from something brand new like Starfield. Still, a brand new IP from Bethesda Game Studios, a company that's gone back and forth on Fallout and Elder Scrolls for the last two decades, really mostly in on Elder Scrolls. It's probably extremely refreshing to say, hey, we're going to do something new. So while we know next to nothing about it outside of a couple of leaked gameplay screenshots and some very sparse details, uh, I still am interested to see what exactly they are going to present. And it seems like E3 is going to be the date for that. So that's something we can still look forward to. And it's possible that it drops this year but let's carry it into stuff that we really do know about like avowed from obsidian entertainment obsidian continues to prove themselves more and more as time goes on i'm happy so much of the industry loves them but i also do at times fear for them not because of their talent but because obsidian is becoming that placeholder name that cd project red once was so remember whenever you heard about a game a ip any virtual idea that could be put into a video game that was a role-playing title, you would see CD Projekt Red should do this, CD Projekt Red should do that, CD Projekt Red should do XYZ. Obsidian is slowly becoming that company. And I get it, they make really good RPGs. I have not played the Pillars of Eternity series. I have to be honest with everybody. It's on Game Pass, it's downloaded on my Xbox, and I promise you, I will have a 2021 review out for these games promise because avowed for those who don't know is based in the pillars of eternity universe to me that inherently makes those older games more exciting and it also brings a lot of potential to the table for avowed i mean the vision for this game you could tell just by the trailer alone with the way that the magic was in one hand and you had a blade in the other skyrim by obsidian and that is absolutely exciting i think with the outer worlds they proved that they can make a nice tight rpg with hub areas some people aren't as big on the outer worlds for me it's really the combat but otherwise the dialogue and the choices as well as the characters and the stories i thought were fantastic so i trust obsidian on that front i'm very curious to see how they handle exploration in an open world environment because when you really look at it we haven't quite seen that since new vegas that was the last time that I can think of, right? Because we've had South Park since then. We've had The Outer Worlds. But we haven't had a true big open world title from them. We've had open areas. The Outer Worlds has Monarch, which, you know, that's a big open area that you as the player can explore and see everything there. And there's tons of quests. And I thought that was designed well and it was handled well. But still, overall, this is going to be their first time tackling something like this in a very long time. And so I'm curious to see how that's handled. My assumption is Avowed will come out probably in like 2023. Uh, we don't know really much about the development cycle, but I would imagine it's safe to assume that in 2019, when the Outer Worlds finally released, that we got full development for Avowed. So four years, that sounds about right, 2023. But still, another excellent sounding title, sounding, not looking, sounding title, uh, when it comes to Xbox's RPG portfolio. Let's keep moving on. We just saw a company release a game that was wonderful in the RPG genre, and that was In Exile Entertainment. In Exile is home to Brian Fargo, father of Fallout. For those who don't know, Wasteland gave birth to Fallout. So having Obsidian, Bethesda, and In Exile underneath the same umbrella, there's limitless potential there. I really think that while we do know that In Exile is working on a AAA RPG, it's going to be super ambitious. It's using Unreal Engine 5, which practically guarantees this is going to be next gen only. I would also love to see In Exile make a isometric Fallout game. I would love, 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 love that. I think now is the time while Fallout is at its most popular to show people what the roots of Fallout were. Look, I, I'll be real. I know I'm not the only one who did this. When I was younger, and I only played Fallout 3. I looked up and said, well, maybe there's more of this. I must have missed it. That's possible. I look up Fallout 1 and 2 and I'm like, what is this? This isn't Fallout. Huh. Maybe the first one was Fallout 3. I don't know why they call it that. Maybe I just don't understand it because the games look so vastly different. 
and they work by completely different teams and completely different eras of gaming. So I think now is the time, bring in Exile in, have them make a tactical style Fallout game. And Xbox has to know what they're doing, right? You've got Obsidian, you've got in Exile, you got Fallout all underneath the same roof, whether it's a remaster of Fallout 1 and 2 or a brand new isometric style Fallout game, something has to be happening with the Fallout license because with Fallout 76 existing, which 76 has bounced back to some extent, in my opinion, I think it's a much better game than when it launched. Still, 76 is 76 and as a live service game, it'll continue to get updated. And I think a new open world, third person, first person Fallout game would actually really hurt 76. And I don't think Bethesda wants that, but a isometric Fallout RPG, that's different. I think that doesn't hurt anything. It just adds to Fallout. And I think the potential of role-playing and writing there, oh my God, please. I mean, I would love to see that. But still, In Exile recently proved themselves with Wasteland 3. Like I said, this is the series that gave birth to Fallout. So you'll see some parallels across the board from the dark humor to the post-apocalyptic nature of the series. But the difference with Wasteland is that you have squads. So you have six people in your party where Fallout's more of a lone wanderer. You're by yourself, you're exploring this wasteland, but the parallels are there. And if you are a fan of Fallout and you have been yearning for a wonderful choice driven and i mean choice driven spider webs on spider webs on spider webs when it comes to choices rpg look at wasteland 3 one of the best of the generation my favorite of the last gen divinity original sin 2 guess what's number two wasteland 3 please do check that game out especially if you're invested in the future of seeing if you know maybe you're a playstation gamer and you want to know how much do i want to be interested in xbox's future wasteland 3 is multi-plat so go ahead, give that a look, see what this company is doing, because if you value choice and consequence, good tactical combat, varied character builds, interesting character stories, Wasteland 3, telling you, really, really worth a look. That brings us to the end of this list with Playground Games. Now, Playground Games is not an RPG developer at all. They made Forza Horizon as a series, and in fact, Forza Horizon was the only racing game series outside of Burnout that I really cared about. Burnout because of the epic car crashes, Need for Speed as a kid, don't get me wrong, but Burnout was the only one that really stuck with me. Outside of that, Forza Horizon managed to hold my attention for a decent amount of time, and I'm not really into racing, I'm not into that type of stuff, because I feel like we're at a point in gaming technology where it's not just about racing, like you can get out of your car and do stuff, so you'll see something such as a GTA, which can do fun racing, at the same time as letting you get out of your car and do a bunch of different things in the open world, and I don't know how you evolve the racing game formula, but point being is it hasn't really stuck with me as much as when I was a kid, where it made sense in my head that, hey, we can only have this racing game but now even like sleeping dogs they were from the developers who did need for speed titles they had racing and kung fu combat that was absolutely incredible so that's kind of why i've soured on racing games but it does not change that playground games made a captivating title in the racing genre in an open world by the way and so to see them transition into fable is exciting I'll be the first to say I was completely wrong when it came to Horizon Zero Dawn. When that game came out, I remember saying week after week after week on the Ham Radio podcast, I said the loan and I said to Carrick, I said, you know what? I don't think that Guerrilla Games is going to pull it off. I think this game's going to be like, I don't like to use number scores. Y'all know that, but I, I, I was like, it's going to be a hard seven. I think it's going to be a really bad transition where it's going to question if they should just go back to kill zone. And they absolutely knocked it out of the park, right? And that's when I learned, hey, it's really important that we embrace creative visions. We embrace creators who have an idea in their head and they want to chase it. Let them go after it. So I think that type of stuff is extremely, extremely important. So I'm very excited to see a company that's worked on racing games, open world racing games to say, hey, let's take this fantasy RPG and go crazy with it. Have a good time, reboot it, get people in love with it again. Because I like the Fable franchise, Fable 1, Fable 2, amazing, amazing games absolutely must play fable 3 i enjoyed but you know it definitely was a lot more apparently flawed i'd say than the others i'm curious to see what a modern take on a true fable game is and from a new set of eyes and creative heads dude this game's been in development since like what 2017 it's due probably 2022 would be the year i would imagine but 
I just cannot wait to see more. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Once again, Playground Games, I think, is a proven developer. I don't think they're a proven RPG developer like the other three we've talked about through this video. But point being is right now we have an established amount of RPGs in Xbox's stable. And I know some people will receive this as, you're such an Xbox fanboy, Maddie. You're talking about Xbox constantly. I mean, if you've paid attention to my channel for, I don't know, the last number of years, these are games I've talked about constantly. These are companies I've talked about a ton. I've talked about Wasteland 3 since 2017. I've talked about Fallout since the birth of this channel. I've talked about Obsidian Entertainment since the birth of this channel. So nothing's changed here. They just all happen to be under the same umbrella. When it comes to Fable, I made old Fable videos, man. Like I love Fable. So I, I've been making Fable rumor videos whenever there was new information, new leaks. There was the E3 leaks for a while. We covered the trailer. We talked about that. It just happens that RPGs are Xbox this thing right now and i'm all about that if playstation made rpgs you already know i'm in on that right just i care about games give me games man i'm all about that so that's just a, a i don't know what this video would be a, a thought piece at the end of the day it's exciting i'm excited i think it's good to be excited a lot of people call that fanboyism because you know what i mentioned earlier you want to be put in the box right let's put everyone in the box and quickly identify them it's like no you can be excited and critical at the same time it's 100 possible don't let people tell you otherwise with that though I leave it in your hands. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Curious to see your thoughts on Xbox's future with RPGs and just RPGs in general. So fire away. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all the patrons and all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. I appreciate each and every single one of you. I'll talk with you soon. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.